Hello everyone, NatLabs here. Today we're going to be making this sort of a knob in Godot, and as you can see over here, we can essentially use the values to do anything we want, and um, I'm not sure why, but I thought it would be a cool idea to test it in 3D, and as you can see, we can essentially use these knobs to affect where real world items, and um, that's cool and all, but how do we make it? So let's jump straight right into it. If I was gonna be making a knob, what would I think about? I would obviously want to think about of a way to make sure that when I click, Right, like when I click, I want to click and I want to make sure that it like listens to me. I want to make sure that like I can click in this knob, turn it, and then click in this knob and turn it. And if even if I hover my mouse over this, it doesn't turn. How do I do that? Well, I would think about setting up in my project settings. In my pro if I would go to my project settings, I would go into input map and I would probably want to make a, a action called click. And in that action click, I would want to make it so that when I press with my left button, I would want every frame I would want to check if my mouse distance was a certain distance away from uh sorry get going to throw go mouse vision i want to i would want to check the distance squared not distance just because it's easier on the system i would want to check its distance away from the knob the, the center of the knob knob that global position i would obviously want to check that over and over every frame and if the mouse um and if my mouse distance was less than, I don't know, some some number. If the mouse was less than like, the, let's say the max distance, and let's just say that at the time, arbitrarily it's 7,000, we can make it anything later, let's just say just a big number at the moment. If that mouse distance is less than the max distance, and if that mouse distance is less than the max distance, and we just clicked, and we just clicked, oh, my mouse was way up, and if we just press click, then we obviously want to set some sort of idea of like following, um, we're just the, like the mouse is or the, the knob is going to be following our uh, mouse if we just clicked inside of a certain range following equal to true and then obviously if we just release the mouse input dot is action just released uh, action just released if we just released it then we can say following is equal to false that's pretty simple we got an error obviously um, oh okay there was a difference here okay run it and we get nothing. Why? Um, let's actually print following. And at the moment in time, we can just get rid of this other knob. Um, and we can see uh, when I press hold, I can like drag. But when I let go, it it's basically like a button kind of. I can basically click with inside. G generally, 7000 is okay for this exact specific example. Play around with the numbers, obviously, um, to suit your needs. But we have that set up. Cool, cool. Next, what do we do? Next, we want to ask, okay, if we're following, so if the if we're following, what do we want to do? Well, since we're working with a knob, we obviously want to get some sort of angle. So let's get an angle variable. And obviously, if we just look at the structure of the knob, we can say, hmm, what would be a good idea? Um, so we want to modify this. How do we, like, what does that look like? Um, essentially, what we're trying to do, if we comment this out, we essentially want to click and we want to get some sort of a, we want to get some sort of an angle. So let's say my mouse is like over here-ish. Let's say my mouse is over here. We want to get some sort of an angle here, and it's obviously relative to this. Maybe? I don't know. Like maybe we should make it relative to this. I think making it relative to this center point would be a good idea. And that's where that middle position comes in. This one over here, this middle point, that's where it comes in. Because it would be a good idea to tell whether we're on the left or the right of a knob. Or essentially we can move this around and like redefine the middle position if we wanted to. So we can start off by saying get underscore global mouse position dot angle two, angle two point. Um and what, what point to knob, uh, we want to get it to our knob dot global position. And then we can just print angle, right? We can play around with it. And we can see we have an angle set up, but we can see that it kind of flips between the negatives over there and it's zero over here. Okay, so it's kind of like, okay, so let's understand how it's, okay, it's zero around this area. Okay, we're increasing, increasing one. So this is in radians, by the way. So we're, we're approaching pi. Okay, so it flips between positive and negative pi and up here is negative pi interesting since over here we have um zero and we want zero to be up here we can just multiply by pi divided by two control is save and you can see that zero is up here now and we have negative angles over here oh kind of oh not really um not really if you see we have three pi over two over here ish and then over here it's pi over two negative pi over two that kind of makes sense because we kind of just shifted the entire thing 90 degrees this way so that means we have more over here as the positive direction, and we have this as the negative direction, or a negative set of angles. Next, I think it might be a good idea to actually try playing around with these angles to see if we can work with them, or should we change our approach? So essentially what we want to do is, we just really want to say that knob.rotation, 
rotation is equal to angle. Let's see how that gets us anywhere. Hey, it works perfectly that we have something working. Amazing. That's literally all we needed to do. Um, if we wanted this, um, the reason we needed plus pi halves is, as you can see, it's kind of like 90 degrees from where we are, if that wasn't obvious over there, but essentially we have our thing working. Now that we have this simple setup working where we can actually get our angles, like our knob to kind of rotate wherever we're like pointing the mouse and not click wherever else, we want to kind of like get some values down. So what value can we get down? Well, we can get knob point position. Remember this one, the one that's supposed to be rotating around with the knob? Well, we can get its position. Let's try getting its position. When we run it and we just want to say knob position, the issue is, um, it kind of doesn't tell us the position. We have to kind of rotate, do dot rotated by knob rotation to knob position and or knob point. And we get our sort of like understanding of where this knob is. Now, if we wanted to, could we have also done knob point dot global position minus global position of this parent? And would we have got the same thing? Yeah, it looks like we would have got the exact same thing. Either one works, um, doesn't really matter which one you use, but we're going to convert either one. I'm going to convert the top one to a variable, a uh, variable called, I don't know, let's call it the difference, D. And since this is going to be a float, or no, it's going to be a vector too, we want to find this position, or essentially what we want to do is we want to find an angle that is kind of like this. Essentially, now that we know where this is, we can find an angle with reference to this. Kind of like that, so we can calculate this angle and we can make a value out of it. How do we do that? Well, we can say let's make another variable called a, and then let's just call it. Um, it would be a float, obviously. We don't have to type that. We can just do this as well. But essentially, it would be it would be with reference to our middle point, and we would say position for its position. Get an angle to, get an angle to where angle to the knob point, right? Get an angle to its position. And if we print out A, essentially what we get is we get nothing. And it, essentially we want to get it to not point out position. But remember, since not point out position isn't moving, we have to rotate it. We have to apply the rotation to it. We can see that we get a set of values that were more manageable. See, we get like zero to pi over here, and we get negative pi, uh, zero or zero to negative pi over here. And we can kind of use that for anything we want. And we can see that we can actually move around our knob and kind of create multiple variations. Like let's say you wanted zero to be here for whatever strange reason, and you wanted this to be like like the maximum, you can do that. Or if for some strange reason you wanted to be like at this diagonal right here, um, you can do that as well. Like this allows a lot more versatility. Like this is a zero, and then this would be the maximum. Um, personally, I don't understand how a knob could work if the zero is here. Actually, yeah, no, no, that makes sense. This is zero, and then this would like increase over all the way over here, and this would be the max. That makes sense. But I think over here, and then like having this as zero, and then moving it left and right, that's one I'm going to be working on here. So essentially, now that we have this um, this value that tells us like uh, gives us a good range of where we are, we can convert that into something else. And essentially, we can convert this. Uh, we can make a new angle called final angle, and we can just say take this a value, and between negative pi and pi just assign it a value of zero and hundred. So if we print out that final angle, um, and range alert, by the way, essentially just lets takes, it lets us take two values and then map them to another set. Essentially we take uh, 75 and in between zero and hundred, 75 is like, I would say it's like three fourths of the way there. And if we take it between negative one and one, it'll turn out to be 0 0.5. That works if you do the math, but essentially we can use range alert here. And if we run this, and we just print it out, you can see that we get values. So we can see that over here is 100. Over, oh, so over here would be zero, like right here is zero. And we can go all the way around and we can get 100, right? That would be max. Um, if we move our middle point down here, we can see that we can get like, okay, uh, so over here would be zero. So to fix that, I guess, I guess moving this here would help. And then over here would be zero. Right over here is zero, and we can increase our throttle, increase, 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 and then this would be the max. Obviously, we don't want to like, I guess you could do that, that's pretty cool, but um, then it just loops back to zero. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, it's not maybe not that practical for me in this current moment to have zero, or zero? Maybe it's not super practical for me to have zero over here and 100 over here and just move them around like this. Maybe that's not super practical. 
Maybe that's not super practical, but we can worry about that in a second. But what happens if we wanted to clamp our values? A good way to clamp the angle is to literally just say clamp. But as you can see over here, we have a slight issue where it doesn't like properly clamp over there. So how can we fix it? Well, we could fix it by using a, a new variable, which is just the lerped angle. Um, essentially, what we're taking is the knob rotation and we're trying to like slowly move it towards angle um, by a value. You can play around with this value. It just is, is, it depends how like slow or fast you want your knob to turn. Uh, 0.5 is a lot faster, but you can see over here now we have a sort of system set up where um, we can have a knob. Uh, as you can see, we can like move it to our mouse slowly or fast, uh, whatever you want, depending on this value. And um, that's essentially how we get our, ang our knob set up. But how do we like get a value from it? Well, remember final ang, that is actually where we get our value. Um, we have zero. So, so two to negative two to two over here would just be um, 20 ish around 20 to around 80. And we can convert this and we can emit this as a signal. So this is all the code we need for our knob to work. And we can just say emit signal, uh, turned knob, turn knob. And we can emit signal, emit signal, um, emit signal, uh, sorry, signal up here. And we can emit signal, um, let's see, emit, sorry. This is how you define a, a custom signal. And we can emit the custom signal called turn knob, and we can attach an argument, which is our final angle. And if we go over here to our 3D test scene, we can see that our knob over here, everything's the same with our knob, but essentially what we do over up, here, up here in our world is we take our knob and we connect the signal turn knob to ourself, which is to this script over here. We connect it to the function called turn knob, and it takes in an argument called float, and it will just convert the rotation degrees of the x-axis to that value and we have our knob working. Of course, if I run the correct scene, you can see that we have our knob and I will just add a new one um, in front of you right now. So we can obviously duplicate this, move this over here and we can go back and essentially add another knob. So connect this to turn knob two. Um, in turn knob two, in turn knob two, essentially what we have is, uh, we can change the y instead and uh, essentially the same idea but uh if i run the correct scene for once we can see that we can turn uh, aspects of our environment using knobs in godot that's kind of how you would make a knob and clamp and essentially that's all there is to it of course the code and everything is down in the description but it's not that hard and if you don't understand how this works entirely it's okay i also don't fully truly grasp it as my explanations might have been a bit lackluster this time but essentially that if you were able to work this out those first principles and just playing around with it playing around with it yourself you probably would have come to a similar or if not better solution than i have that's all i really have to say for this tutorial and have an amazing day uh, and enjoy any game that you make with knobs that's all bye now if i was going to be making this knob i would be thinking a couple things what do i start with how do i think about this knob uh, how do i how do i think about a knob well if i go to paint wow stop why are you texting me? Oh, wait, I want that. Oh, actually. Okay, never mind. That was actually valid. Valid. Okay, anyways. Uh, if I was going to be making a knob. Um, no, Siri, stop listening to me.